Karn was lashed to a floating piece of slag by the harmonic singing of Elish Norn's choir. Most of his body had been dismantled and taken for scrap. He thought back to Urza's explanation for making him capable of feeling pain. He'd said people were less likely to hurt something that screamed. Too bad Phyrexians weren't people. Karn had no choice but to embrace his agony, to reshape it, and make something useful of it, to anchor himself to the remains of his body. As long as he could feel pain, Karn was himself. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Etherhub. I'm Simon, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today we continue the story of March of the Machine, the events in MTG that are tearing down some of our favorite characters and planes. Previously in the story, which you can find linked on your screen right now or down in the description below, we saw Elspeth Terrell's trials after she exploded with the Silex in a noble sacrifice. The spirit of Sarah, a planeswalker who created angels, guides her through her transformation into the thing she was always meant to be. In this, she has to make a choice, and she chooses to appear on New Phyrexia to help in the deciding fight for the multiverse. At the end of this video today, stick around because I'll be taking a look at a newly spoiled Planeswalker card for March of the Machine. And remember, if you're enjoying the video, consider supporting it with a like, becoming a member, and dropping a super thanks. Now let's continue with the March of the Machine story with Chapter 12, Divine Intervention, written by K. Arsenault Rivera. Mirrodin fell because of Karn. In his arrogance, he'd shaped the plane. In his hubris, he'd left Memnark in charge of it. In his ignorance, he'd spread Phyrexian oil across the plain. If he had paid more attention, he might have seen Memnark lose his way, or the oil dripping in his wake, but he didn't. They shouldn't follow him. All of this was a problem he created. Karn had sworn to honor Venzer's memory, the planeswalker who came to find him while he was infected with Phoresis, who'd given his own spark to let Karn live. Venzer had sacrificed himself because he had seen something in him worth fighting for, and if Karn let himself die now, he'd be betraying his friend. Karn had almost died back then, but almost all the friends who saved him were here now fighting. They shouldn't follow him, but Venzer's spark was in him and followed him all the way here. He looked around at Koth, Chandra, and Malira, all beaten to the ground. After all their time struggling against the impossible, the sacrifices, all they'd work for, they were all going to die here. When they first arrived, there were dozens of Mirren would-be rescuers. Now only about 25 survivors still had all their limbs. The others were dragged off by Jingitaxius to be spliced or be used in foul experiments. One of Norn's singers takes Karn's head and positions it so he has to look at her horrific face. Jingitaxius lifted his wicked claws to strike him, and Karn closed his eyes, seeking comfort in ghosts from his past. Then a golden light swallowed them, so bright only Karn was built to see through it. An angel in gleaming armor, her golden sword raised and aiming for Jingitaxius. When she lands, she makes a crater in the metal beneath her, sending Phyrexians tumbling over the platform into the abyss. Elish Norn's choir fell over the edge as well, releasing Karn's head to clink on the ground. The angel spoke a warning, in a voice Karn knew. Elish Norn knew the voice as well. It was Elspeth Terrell with radiant golden wings. Elspeth lets Jingitaxius scramble to his escape as she leans down to heal the wounds on Chandra's face. In anger, Elish Norn stands up, throwing over her own throne and crushing a few of her subordinates. Elspeth does not dignify Norn with a response. Instead, she moved to heal Koth. Elish Norn furiously throws a porcelain piece of her throne at Elspeth, who's unfazed as it shatters against her wing. The ranks of Phyrexia now feel something. Something like shock. Something like fear. They begin to pull back, and the Mirren Resistance sees their chance. Koth gets up and drives his fist into the ground, sending magma shooting from below. Elish Norn ignores them and snatches whatever she can find to hurl at Elspeth, but none of it concerns the angel. Jingitaxius approaches Elish Norn, reminding her that the prisoners were escaping. Elish Norn grabs him by the throat, their spat distracting them from seeing Malira run and grab Karn's head. Ren couldn't get up, not yet. There wasn't much of her left, she no longer had legs but she still carried the weight of the world on her shoulders. She tells Chandra they need to go, but the pyromancer is distracted by the angel Elspeth Terrell's radiance. 
Chandra snapped back to reality and scooped up Ren and carried her away, followed by the surviving Mirren resistance. Koth calls for the platform that holds Karn and Malira to come to him. The stone answers him the way Wood answered Ren. They escaped a barrage of arrows, but they couldn't avoid a completed Nyssa. She strode after them, inevitable, flinging bodies out of her way, no compassion or mercy left in those eyes. Ren knew Chandra couldn't bring herself to hurt Nyssa, though there was nothing left of who the elven planeswalker used to be. They needed to get to the tree, though Ren didn't know how. All she had was faith. Phyrexia rages, but it cannot break Elspeth's peace. As Elish Norn throws chunks of porcelain at her, she doesn't flinch. She's above all of that now. Once, she'd found Elish Norn frightening, but not anymore. All the dross of Elspeth's life had been cut away, leaving only truth. The truth is that Phyrexia will not win this day. Elish Norn stretches her claws and grabs Elspeth's leg, slamming her to the ground. Elspeth's ears ring, and her vision blurs as Elish Norn stands over her. The Praetor lifts shards of metal from the dead bodies around her, weaving herself a new, hideous suit of armor. Elspeth looked over her shoulder to see Nyssa stalking her allies as they attempted to escape. Elspeth concentrated on her blade, sending a searing beam of light at Elish Norn. Chunks of Norn's new armor fall away, but she raises a smoking hand, bidding the flesh of the fallen to rise and surround them. They were already robbed of their metal parts, but there was no death for Phyrexians. Elspeth took to the air once more before the risen ranks could pin her down. These summoned walls shot up all the way to the ceiling of the fair basilica. Elspeth struck the wall, but Phyrexia was everything she laid eyes on. The ground beneath her, the air she breathed, the porcelain plating that did not yield to her sword. She concentrates again on her blade, making it glow until the aura gleams across her armor. Below, Vorinclex and Jingataxius' legions lash cables and close around her wings. She starts to descend. Elish Norn lets loose more lashes from her hand, but Elspeth chops at them with her sword, sending the Phyrexians tumbling backwards. She flies towards Elish Norn, dodging a slash, and lands a slice across the Praetor's arm. Elish Norn grabs Elspeth's wing, trying to convince her that Phyrexia offered the home she had always longed for. Elspeth cuts at Norn's fingers, but she does not let go, still trying to convince Elspeth the Angel that her fleshy, angelic form was an imitation of what new Phyrexia had accomplished. Elspeth thought of her fallen allies, Nyssa, Nahiri, Ajani. None of them seemed upset with their new forms. Home could be whatever you made it. If she joined New Phyrexia, she would be with all of her friends. She could be with Ajani, and even her lost love, Daxos. They could be undying and ageless, all as one. Elish Norn compared the oneness of Phyrexia to divinity, and considered angels as a shadow of divinity. The same way individuals were merely shadows of the whole. The Mother of Machines taunted her, pointing out that in all the years she had looked upon Phoresis with horror, Elspeth was now embracing it, but by another name, referring to this magic that has suddenly changed her into an angel. Elspeth tries to argue, but she can't say anything in her defense. Jingataxius calls out, frustrated that his liege is so distracted by this angel. Elish Norn is reduced to rage, and she attacks her subordinate, Oil sprays as Jingataxis' arm is torn off, revealing Elspeth the answer to their differences. She escapes from Elish Norn's grip and flies higher into the air, concentrating power into her sword. Norn was right, they weren't so different. However, her and her friends argue. They make mistakes. They had their own wants, dreams, and desires. The Praetors had disagreed. Jingataxis wanted to ignore Elspeth, but Elish Norn wanted to destroy her. Elspeth understood Phyrexia. If she struck down Elish Norn, the other Praetors would do nothing to save her. Elspeth looked back at Elish Norn, so hungry for power. Phyrexia didn't really matter to her. Swords and shards of metal were pulled from the bodies of the Phyrexian army, from the walls and the ground. They were hurled towards Elspeth. Elspeth dives to evade the swirling metal and unleashes a ray of light. When the light fades, she's already halfway to the tree. While she wasted time arguing with Elish Norn, Chandra and Ren had almost reached the invasion tree. Elspeth had to make sure they got there. And there you guys go, the moment we all long for is finally here. Els Elspeth in all of her angelic glory, 
her true form hinted at over the past few years, has shattered the dark veil of New Phyrexia and struck at its very heart. Archangel Elspeth has turned the tides against Elish Norn, breaking through her ideology to show her that unity, in its uncompromising nature, is flawed and destined to fail. While she fights for her friends regardless of differences, the Phyrexians will always let the weak fall, even if it is their unquestioned leader. Now let's talk about Elspeth's new Planeswalker card in March of the Machine, our first ever Angel Planeswalker, Archangel Elspeth. Archangel Elspeth, of course, doesn't have the Angel subtype because you know, it's still just a Planeswalker, but man does it do some great stuff with Angels. For 2 generic mana and double white, Archangel Elspeth comes into play with 4 loyalty counters. Plus 1, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with lifelink. Minus 2, put 2 1-1 one, one counters on target creature, it becomes an angel in addition to its other types and gains flying. And minus 6, return all non-land permanents with mana 3 or less from the graveyard to the battlefield. Now at face value, without much testing or anything like that, I think Archangel Elspeth is just an okay planeswalker. She's really not that crazy, copying a lot of abilities from previous Elspeth planeswalker cards, and yeah, turning creatures into angels with flying is great flavor. Still, there's not too much going on that makes me think that this card is going to be super powerful. Oh yeah, and her ultimate, caring for the little guys, that's also a huge plus in the flavor category. That being said, it's nowhere near a bad level of Planeswalker. She does stuff, she can protect herself, which is always huge when I tend to evaluate Planeswalkers. This card alone can make you a few 3-3 flyers with lifelink. It may take you a little bit of time, but it's pretty decent as a token generator. So I'll say it's right in the middle of the pack territory. Of course, in limited, it's amazing. Monocolored with abilities that just work in everything. You're gonna draft it every time you see it. Of course, I want to know your thoughts on the new Archangel Elspeth card in the comment section below. As the story continues, there's still a fight to be had on New Phyrexia. The day hasn't been won yet. For now though, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, consider supporting the channel by leaving a like, becoming a subscriber or member, dropping a super thanks, and sharing it with friends. It all goes a long way in helping the community grow. As always, thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, see ya!